بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيد الخلق أجمعين محمد بن عبد الله وآله وصحبه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين uh, It is my pleasure to be with you continue discussion of press imaging and share experiences We finished two major mammographic abnormalities which are masses and asymmetry and today uh, we'll go through systemic or systematic approach to evaluate the mammographic classifications. You are familiar now with this illustration. You would, uh, you would see throughout uh, my lectures that represent the three main imaging techniques uh, used to evaluate breast cancer and breast conditions um, with the mammogram at the head of uh, these illustrations and the overlapping signifies the complementary effect. However, imaging is part of triple assessment, uh, which uh, in include clinical examination, imaging and biopsy, uh, that remains the fundamental approach to breast diagnosis. Okay. We have a great continued awareness, not only in October, but also throughout the years and make it think. Reminder, the most important factors influencing the risk of developing breast cancers are reproductive, um, hormonal, are reproductive uh, and hormonal factors, which increase risk by early menar, late age at the first birth, low parity and late menopause. Okay, this patient has uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And this image, uh, part of the or zoom of uh, mammogram at her axilla. Demonstrate this small lymph node with a calcific opacities or high density uh, group of uh, micro uh, densities seen within. What is your differential diagnosis for these findings? Any volunteer? This axilla. And these small lymph nodes with, mm -hmm, uh -huh. what is the differential diagnosis for calcified lymph node due to? I think due to treatment. Treatment of what? Who's talking? Who's talking? The one is going to talk, please tell me, tell me. Um, Present yourself first and then uh, give the, the answer. Huh? Due to treatment of what? Of rheumatoid? Uh-huh. I think the, the gold, gold treatment. Gold treatment. Gold, uh, gold treatment. Yes, excellent, gold excellent, treatment. excellent. Well done. What, what other differential diagnosis? What could it be? If it is not due to the gold, yes. First of all, we have to think since we are giving the history, rheumatoid arthritis, those are treating with gold salts, or salts of gold, expected to be deposited in a lymph nodes and giving appearance stimulating calcifications. But still it can be calcifications due to this type of calcifications in a lymph nodes. Can be due to, okay, it can be due to mucinous type of uh, tumors, metastatic uh, adenopathy, mainly ovarian, uh, or it can be due to treated lymphoma. Okay. And what is going on here? Mm -hmm. This image demonstrates a group of microcalcifications in the axilla, okay, more, more clearly visualized in a spot magnification view. But on tangential view, and this is the BB, demonstrate that mm -hmm. calcification 
is related to skin. So it is related to the uh, zinc oxide cream. That is why in the lectures of, uh, in the first lecture when we talk about the preparation for mammography, we said we have to tell the patient not to put any ointment, lotions, or these things. And what is going on here? This lecture is about calcifications. So look for the types of calcifications and these things. Huh? These are in calcification. Where? Yeah, you're right. Mainly on the lateral aspects of bilateral breast. But yes, there are bilateral numerous uh, uh, lesions with a ream of calcification. What is your impression regarding this lesion? What could it be? Mm, rim calcifications could occur. The numerous with... are so numerous throughout the breast. It occurs with oil cysts, but they are. Numerous. Yeah, it can be oil cysts. It can be also. This case is silicon granulomas. This is a silicon granulomas. Type. What is what is the type of this calcification? This is a popcorn calcification. Excellent, popcorn calcifications. And this one? Dystrophic calcifications. Excellent, dystrophic type of calcifications. Okay, so calcification are extremely common present in more than 85% of mammogram in women increasing with uh, the, its frequency increasing with age are almost always benign however can be early and only presenting sign of breast cancers in contrast to broad spectrum of benign calcification etiologies uh, malignant calcifications on mammography two thirds of which represent DCIS and the, and the other third represents invasive ductal carcinoma. And the, there is increase in detection of DCIS with the advent of organized screening uh, during the late uh, 1980s that, lead, that led to increase in the detection of microcalcification, which continue to increase with introduction of digital mammography that increase that increase the conspicuity of the microclassification as well as increasing sophisticated biopsy technique that facilitate tissue diagnosis. Up to 50% of breast cancers can be associated with uh, calcifications while uh, 15 to while 15 to 30 percent of calcification, Biopsies for various reasons tend to be malignant in asymptomatic patients. The best imaging reporting and data system uh, lexicon support consistency in nomenclature and provide descriptions to discriminate between benign and malignant type of calcifications. And it's highly recommended. And the calcification is one of the four uh, four important um, calcif um, abnormalities in the mammographic lexicons. Mammography, the most important method in breast diagnostic since many years, and the new and the now developed digital imaging gives more possibilities for mammography, is, is the best method for detecting micro calcifications. Calcifications, as you know, uh, can uh, is an important part in detecting early in situ cancer. However, we have to stop here. Why? The micro calcification noted at mammography is usually much larger than that identified microscopically. And the smallest size seen at mammography is 0.1 millimeter. However, histopathology is able to identify calcification much smaller 
than this point one millimeter threshold for calcification uh, visible on mammography. And it's important for accurate radiologic pathologic correlation to specify the size of calcification seen on histopathology. Our learning objectives for today's session is to know the mammographic descriptions of, uh, of press classifications given in the Bayrats Atlas and to understand the classifications of mammographic classifications according to Bayrats fifth editions, to understand diagnostic workup on uh, on, on a systematic basis in order to evaluate mammographic calcifications, how to manage variable types of press calcifications, uh, to know some differential diagnosis of different type of calcifications, and to know the positive predictive value for malignancy of different type of mammographic calcifications. Okay. Uh, the approach for diagnostic, uh, the diagnostic approach for mammographic calcifications include uh, size and uh, very important descriptors, uh, discriminating between micro and macro calcifications, uh, and then uh, morphology, which represent the shape and margin of the particles as a predictor of likely would are as important descriptor predicting the likelihood for malignancy, uh, also including distribution of classification, which descriptor used to indicate the arrangement of classification in the breast. The associated feature definitely is always important for any mammographic abnormality. And in this case include mass, architectural distortion, asymmetry, as well as the skin thickening, trabecular thickening, or axillary adenopathy, like other lesions, locations of calcification within the breast on mammography is also important descriptors, and then change over time as uh, a descriptor for a calcifications. Regarding the size, which is the longest axis of calcifications of the particles, uh, the important descriptors to, dec to discriminate between uh, benign and malignancy. And in this image, definitely you have seen a fine type of classification, all the micro classifications um, out of the mass, not related to a mass. And uh, with uh, uh, the caliber is less than 0.5 millimeters. When it is more than 0.5 millimeter, we call it a macro classification. However, mostly it is typically uh, more than two millimeter and we call it coarse or macro classification. Definitely here, this is a coarse type of uh, benign classification. We'll be relaxed when we see it on mammography, but the dilemma will be when we see this type of micro classifications. Uh, is, is it benign or malignant? In this example, a benign type of micro calcification. So micro calcifications, the one less than 0.5 millimeter size, it can be benign lesion as well as a malignant lesion. However, we are always aiming to exclude, okay, the mammographic calcifications that representing DCIS as early uh, detections to when it was uh, so curable. So uh, benign calcifications is usually coarse. However, uh, it's usually coarse, uh, usually more than uh, 0.5 millimeter. However, many uh, benign calcifications can be fine less than 0.5 millimeter. Malignant, malignant uh, calcifications and often round smooth margins. Sorry. During, yeah. Okay. So, sorry. We said 
the benign lesions are usually coarse and larger, more than uh, 0.5 millimeter. However, many can be fine, less than 0.5 millimeter, but often around the smooth margins and much more easier seen than malignant calcification. While malignant calcification occur in a third of breast cancers, may develop prior to invasive stage uh, in DCIS when it is more curable, as we mentioned. The majority of DCIS are first detected on a screening mammogram, classically manifest as calcifications, DCIS representing uh, up to 40% of all reported breast cancers and calcifications in invasive carcinoma typically seen in invasive ductal rather than the invasive lobular cancer. And in screening mammography program, the rate of recall because of classification is, uh, was 1.7. And of these 19 resulted in cancer diagnosis. However, in, in the digital mammography era, about one sixth of recalls are for a classification, as we mentioned, uh, digital mammography increases the conspicuity of the uh, microclassifications. And usually, the malignant classification very small, fine, less than 0.5 millimeter, often requires spot magnification view and magnification glasses to be visualized, as seen in this example. Outreach, very fine, difficult to be visualized here is slightly better seen in the spot magnification view compared with this type of benign classification, which is more conspicuous. However, we should always remember artifacts that can simulate a DCIS. The example on the left is artifact, while the one on the right is a DCIS. Okay, micro, micro classifications in terms of forms uh, can come in many shapes and size. In size, the specialist describe breast microclassification as either large or small, or when in a group, whether the sizes of microclassification are homogeneous or not, so they can be round, linear, coarse, or granular, fine, homogeneous size, monomorphic in shape, having basically the same shapes or bleomorphic with uh, many different shapes, size, and density. Regarding the density, microclassifications uh, might be high, low, or variable, uh, homogeneous or non-homogeneous within the same group, the microclassification. And the distribution, as we mentioned, refers to the overall placement or arrangement of microclassification within the breast image and the microclassification can be seen in a single group or multifocal group, can be uni or bilaterally diffused, segmental, linear, or regional, we'll go through this. Okay, uh, what do you think here regarding this image? Uh, what are the factors we describe? The factors, um, uh, we give some description related to the factors discriminating benign from malignant type of classification. What do you think? Which one is benign and which one is malignant? These both are micro classifications. Less than 0.5 uh, millimeter. We said when there is coarse classification will be relaxed. So coarse classification, benign classification, but the dilemma and challenging in, in micro classification, we have to discriminate the benign from malignant type. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Uh, your voice is not clear. I, I, think, the, I think the image uh, on the right on the uh, A is benign. The image what? The, on the A, image A, on the left side. I could not recognize your voice. I image don't know, there a. is some problem. Hello. 
There is one image on the left of the screen and one on the right of the screen. On the left, it is written A at the top uh, right corner of the image on the left side. Which one? You are talking about is B9. Your voice is not clear at all. Huh? I could not hear you. Huh? Salam alaikum. Huh? لا ما واضح صوتك ما واضح اليوم غريبة يعني this is the first time to occur with you السلام عليكم عليكم السلام عليكم السلام أنا دكتور هيدي هلا هيدي الحمد لله uh, which I one think, is benign? Which one is malignant? I, I think image with the letter A, I think it is the malignant because of the cholesterol. Which one is malignant? Um, at the right, with, with the letter A. With the letter A, is malignant or benign? I think it is uh, malignant because of cholesterol. Cholesterol. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, and the other one, uh, the fuse. Uh, Okay. Any other suggestion? I think okay. the left is the benign A because the, the shape and the size is almost uh, similar. Yani. Okay. Uh, but, but the other one uh, is the malignant because they have different shapes, they have different uh, sizes. Okay. Okay. Uh, agree. So, the one on the right is benign, the one on the left is benign, and the one on the right is malignant. I will go through the differences together. Okay? So, the benign type of microclassification is relatively large, while the malignant one is fine and bowdish. Relatively dense, well defined. The benign type while the malignant type is relatively faint, low density, hazy, indistinct. The benign is more conspicuous while the malignant is indiscernible or cotton pole appearance. Just follow me for these descriptors and try to apply it for both. You will see these differences. Okay. The uh, benign type, regular shape, is round, round shape. Look, it gives a round shape, while the malignant having an irregular shape. The benign type, fairly equal in size, fairly. Might show a slight different in size, while the malignant showing a lot of different in size. Generally, the benign type is more or less homogeneous, more uniform uh, in size, density, and shape. Might give a slight or little changes, but the malignant type is usually heterogeneous, neomorphic regarding the size, size shape, density, and so on. And this is not related uh, to this group. Uh, the growth over time, the B9 is slow, while uh, not related to this example, I mean, the growth over time of B9 is usually slowly, while for malignant is more rapid. So is it clear for you now, Heidi? Yes, it's clear. Do you but agree? Think, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, we talked before 
uh, in the lecture of anatomy about the importance of terminal ductal lobular unit, and we said it is a basic functional unit for the breast, okay? And is a, uh, the commonest site for pathology to arise in, including both uh, malignancy like DCIS or invasive cancer, as well as benign type of pathology like fibroadenoma, fibrocystic, um, cyst, apocrine, metaplasia, adenosis, epitheliosis, and so forth. Okay, so what is the terminal duct lobular unit? As we described it before, it is representing uh, numerous asini ranging from 10 up to 100 asini, group of asini collecting, having small subsegmental ducts joining into a terminal ducts or a segmental ducts. And these segmental ducts join together to form a large lactiferous ducts opening into the nipple. So the breast is formed of multiple lobes ranging from 15 to 20 lobes. And each lobes contain about 20 to 40 lobules okay, of these units. So this is very important. Uh, if we understand the anatomy, we could understand the pathology. And according to these, uh, these uh, illustrations, we have two types of classification. The classification arising in the breast is related to this terminal duct lobular unit. It's either arise in this asini or into the terminal ducts, forming what is called lobular classifications, or if it is within the asini, or if it is within the terminal ducts, we call it intraductal classifications. You see? So let us go together through the differences, lobular versus intraductal type of classifications. So lobular classifications filling the asini. And the asini often are often dilated. So it depends on the size of the asini that it gives us the size of classifications. While the introductal classification is uh, occur in a cellular debris inside the terminal ducts or inside a ductal lumen. Lobular classification usually uniform, homogeneous in size and shape or form, and commonly appear as round. And when the asini or the asinar lumen is small, it gives pinpoint or punctate appearance, and sometimes can give egg shape or rim. Uh, look here, this is, can be uh, egg shape or can be a rim calcification uh, at a cyst. And typically it is well-defined, smooth borders, relatively high density, or the criteria of benign type of calcifications while intraductal calcifications, though benign secretory are related to intraductal calcifications, mostly uh, the intraductal calcifications are uneven or are irregular and fragmented. And this is, can be explained by uneven calcification of the cellular debris and are extremely variable in size, density, and form, i.e. is bleomorphic. And it will cast in a linear or branching distributions. The lobular type, when the asini become very large, like in cystic hyperplasia, it can give us milk of calcium or layering like this. You see within these cavities, filling the cavities and my giving a uh, curvilinear layers unlike this. We'll see it later. And sclerosing adenosis due to the fibrosis can result in some distortions, some and the calcification might be small and less uniform, simulating intraductal type and make it difficult to be differentiated from. Intraductal calcification 
Sometimes they form complete cast of the ductal lumen. And this can explain why they often have a fine linear or branching form and uh, uh, linear and segmental distributions. While lobular are usually have diffuse scatter distributions, since most of the breast is involved in this process uh, or, or in this uh, involved by the by this process of forming the, this type of classification, and it is almost always benign, almost always benign, while the intraductal are suspicious type most of the time representing or coded as virat four or five. Why? Lobular car carcinoma is rarely presenting uh, in uh, early as early classifications or uh, lobular carcinoma much less common, okay, to begin with a curious classification. Unlike uh, that is why unlikely lobular calcification to be malignancy. Unlike ductal, ductal carcinoma, invasive ductal carcinoma, which presenting with uh, calcification. And as we described earlier, we said the malignant type calcifications uh, in mammography, two thirds is in uh, DCIS, which also representing ductal, ductal carcinoma. In situ, and one third is invasive ductal carcinoma. Okay, so we finished the size and let us go for morphology. And we said it is important predictors uh, for uh, to discriminate benign from malignant, representing the shape and margins of the particles. Okay. Uh, in 2000, Three atlas, okay, of uh, virad lexicons, uh, considering uh, morphology and distribution. There, are, they were three main categories uh, regarding the uh, descript description of classifications: benign, intermediate concern, and higher probability of malignancy. However. In 2013 version, the fifth edition atlas, the approach has changed and the intermediate concern and the high probability of malignancy are grouped together into a suspicious classifications, either by rat 4B or by rat 4C and treated on the same way by biopsy. So, uh, classifications descriptors in the fifth edition lexicon are consolidated into two categories rather than the three previous three one. Typically, benign classification, no further evaluation is needed, or suspicious classification with variable degree of suspicions, either by rat four B or by RAT4, C, and in both, and most of the time, biopsy is indicated and they eliminate the intermediate classification. So no more intermediate type of classifications in the reporting. Okay, what are the typically benign classifications descriptors according to the BIRAD lexicons? Huh? What are these? Mm -hmm. Popcorn. How many, how yeah, many types? I don't know the number, but I can mention the, the names. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Popcorn calcification, skin Popcorn. calcification, uh -huh. skin calcification, uh -huh. vascular calcification, excellent, rim calcification, excellent, milk of calcium, excellent, uh, rod like calcification. Uh -huh. Uh, punctate calcification. Uh -huh. Punctate and, or punctate or punctate round. round, 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 including the punctate. Okay. Yes. Round. Okay. Huh? Go ahead. 
Two we chair classification. Do what? Two chair classification. And uh, two chair, two chair classification. Two chair classification, excellent. And dystrophic classification. Uh, dystrophic classification. You describe nine. Yeah. So Maybe. are nine. So the typical B9 classification are nine types of classification: skin classification, vascular classification, coarse or bobcore-like classification, larger rod-like classification, round classifications, rim classification, dystrophic classification, milk of calcium, and suture classifications. So these are the nine typical type of classification. We'll go through each. Okay, what is this type of classifications? So, skin skin classifications. Why you say the skin classification? Excellent. Because uh, some of them are projected over the skin. Excellent. Because some of them, if it is not uh, seen projected over the skin, can you suggest to be skin classification? Yes, usually they have a loosened center Excellent. and they are grouped yeah. together. Because there is a pathognomonic features which is, which is the loosened center. So this is, uh, these are the typical, typical benign calcification, skin calcification, which are very common, occur both in the dermis and epidermis. And it is dense, smooth, spherical, and pathognomonic having a loosened center. And they said this when occurred in the sweat gland, giving this a loosened center. And usually, you see, tightly grouped, as in this case, loosened center and tightly grouped. And consider uh, the possibility of dermal. When you consider it, look at Saracet, look at the in face, okay, at the area of the skin looking for any calcification projecting uh, at these regions. And the skin calcification usually seen uh, at the faults, inframammary faults and in axillary regions and so forth. And sometimes it might be difficult to visualize or to characterize. Uh, so you might need to do a tangential view as in this case to this there is no typical, typical uh, calcific obesity projected over the skin that is scattered within the breast. But here in the tangential view is obviously seen and this here projecting over the axilla and also having a loosened center going with the skin type of calcifications. And these are also grouped, you see tightly grouped loosened centers, calcifications, and these are projecting over the skin, which are the typically benign type of calcification. There is one, a, one area of skin calcification that might simulate malignant type of calcification. And sometimes if we could not appreciate it in a tangential view, as in this case, we might need to do even biopsy when the group of calcifications seen of similar size or similar uh, morphology in both oblique and CC view. And this is called a tattoo signs. Okay, uh, what is this type of classifications? Vascular classification. This is a vascular classification, okay? The vascular classification is also typical benign classification, parallel bear trap or tram track formations and uh, it is or discontinuous linear appearance at the margin of tubular structures forming a blood vessel wall and usually originate in the arteries, rarely originate in veins as in case of Mondor disease. See, what is a Mondor disease? Uh, uh, yes. I am to hear. Uh, to hear, you are welcome. Disease. Uh, Mondor is a thrombophlebitis of excellent. Uh, the thrombophlebitis is a thrombophlebitis. Okay, early the vascular calcification early might be faint and interrupted and create some problem. Look here, 
this is one side interrupted and sometimes might be faint and it might even need a magnification view and can give some uh, conflict uh, simulating intradactyl type of calcifications. However, the usual presentation is straightforward and clearly associated with imaging uh, blood vessels. Okay, what about this one? Popcorn. This is a popcorn coarse calcifications, classic, larger than two, three, three millimeters, is irregular, high density, having tendency to grow or to uh, um, confluent, to appear as a confluent and associated with a circumscribed mass, commonly associated with involuting a fibroadenoma. Uh, but during early, okay, evolving the calcifications, small and numerous group of calcification might resemble malignant types and might require biopsy. Okay, what about this one? Milk of calcium. The milk of calcium, yes, this is the milk of calcium. Uh, as we mentioned, this is a lobular calcifications, sedimentation of calcium in macro or micro system. And it is usually, but not always grouped, okay? Often less evident on CC, usually appear on CC as smudgy, fuzzy, or amorphous deposits. And that is why we have to consider magnification spot films with horizontal beam, 90 degree uh, is important. Uh, however, it can appear even in MLO, okay? But more appreciated the levels on the, uh, of calcium or the, uh, this curvilinear or meniscus or crescent shape, T-cup shape, okay? Uh, with the concave up defining the dependent part of the cyst is more appreciated on the uh, 90 degree straight lateral view. However, the striking most important features is apparent change in the shape between the different projections. Between the CC, MLO or true lateral, you might see different in the shapes. That is signified this is a, a milk of calcium type of, cal of calcifications. And sometimes milk of calcium are seen adjacent to other types of calcifications. So we have to be, uh, to, to give attention for this and to make sure all of the calcific obesities we have seen are due to milk of calcium and no adjacent associated malignancy being present, okay? Uh, so it is important to search for more suspicious form, especially those do not change shape in 90 degree image. Here, this is the oblique view, okay? While in the lateral view, uh, demonstrates more uh, levels and, and craniocoda appear as a smudgy, ill-defined fuzzy calcification but here on the uh, medial lateral 90 degree, okay, demonstrate a change in shape. And they, if you look carefully, you might see some demonstrate the teacup appearance, okay. But in this image, it's clearly visualized the CC view around uh, uh, calcification with fuzzy borders, while here demonstrate change in shape with the levels, okay? And uh, here, can you see, here it is filling, and this appearance filling the whole SNI, while in the, when we put the press uh, with, the, with, the, with the effect of gravity, give, showing the layering of milk of calcium, okay? Within a tiny cyst. And in these examples here, this is an circumscribed oval uh, opacity or oval mass with dependent uh, teacup appearance or meniscus-like shape density due to sediment 
of milk of calcium within this large cyst. Now, what about this? Rod like. Rod like. Yes, this is a rod like. Okay, so also this is a typical benign calcification, usually associated with secretory calcification in elderly women. You see, uh, older than Tikisti, and is related to adaptectasia or related to the periodontal mastitis or plasma cell mastitis. And it is, uh, uh, it forms continuous rot that may occasionally be branching, as seen in this image here. Look for the branching, and large tubules uh, follow ductile distribution. That is why. Uh, radiating toward the nipple. Okay. Look here, are uh, radiating toward the nipples and usually is bilateral, often segmental, uh, oriented with long axis, as we mentioned, toward the nipples, if, if, uh, in segmental or in diffuse pattern. Uh, maybe dense, solid, or discontinuous, smooth, linear rod or cigar shape or stick-like. Look for this stick-like appearance, okay? And it might having a hollow, okay, center when arising uh, uh, in the wall of the duct. In this solid type is usually calcification, uh, secretions, calcified secretion within the ductal lumens, but when it is hollow like this, and with the lucent centers is related to the calcifications of the wall of the duct. And this type of calcification are usually uh, large, measuring four millimeter can be up to one centimeter length. And the caliber is more than one millimeter in diameter. Okay, sometimes it's difficult to differentiate uh, this type from linear calcification of DCIS in these fragmented rod-like uh, calcifications. Uh, these are three examples of plasma cell mastitis. Look, this is a typical uh, rod-like calcification, diffused scattered, you see, and pointing or radiating toward the, the nipple area. And these are not uh, typical rod-like, are very short and some are punctate and round type of calcification, which are also, while other small and faint early uh, rod-like calcifications. And the, in the third example, these are few focal, this is a focal area of few rod-like uh, calcification. And this is a round lucent center calcification in other uh, focal regions. This is also benign type classification in secretory mastitis. But what are the type? This is not a typical rod like. We call it what? Seen as? Mm -hmm. Eggshell. Eggshell classification. Eggshell, yeah. Previously called eggshell. But now? Dream. Yes. yes, yes, uh, yes, this is, yeah. Uh, if we magnify this also, same, this, uh, yeah, this is are small, but some are large, so variable size, from small to large like this, okay? Previously, we call this elucent centers calcifications and this eggshell calcification. But they join, they combine together in the latest uh, edition, fifth edition, and into rim calcifications. No more eggshell or lucent center calcification, which are usually round or oval with the lucent centers and having a smooth type and commonly seen in a fat necrosis or in a secretory uh, calcification in the wall, in a secretory type of mastitis, secretory mastitis. And 
these are which type this is the previously called elucent centers and this is the previously called eggshell calcifications you see now being eliminated both in the fifth editions and the new terms is rim calcification at current in your report you have to describe it as a rim calcifications which is a lobular type of calcification as we mentioned before and usually uh, thin less than one millimeter thickness is smooth layer of calcium around uh, at the surface of the sphere when viewed at age or on age calcification in the wall of oil or a symbol cyst even a calcification in a cyst water cyst can also give rim calcification and these are typically non-group type of calcifications and range from under from under one millimeter in size to large centimeter or more the calcifications are uh, uh, and the calcifications are uh, round or oval with smooth surface and loosened centers as we described represent a fat necrosis or calcified debris in adults um and uh fat necrosis the, the commonest the commonest is the fat necrosis uh the, um, representing this type of rim calcifications and sometimes it can demonstrate more expensive type or thicker type of rim calcification as visualized in these examples so with time this calcification might increase from thin type to coarser and thicker types. See in this example here, 2003, it was very thin, increasing with time at 2007. What about this type of classifications? Dystrophic. This is a dystrophic type of classifications. So the dystrophic types, it's also can be previously also described as a fat necrosis classification. It is commonly also associated with a fat necrosis, and but also can develop in scar and stromal tissue. Uh, it's seen in irradiated breast in post surgery or following trauma. Can be seen in a hematoma, abscess, or fibrous capsule of implant. Classification are usually large, coarse, and dense and irregular giving a lava shaped and the size usually large than one millimeter and often having a loosened centers and uh, being associated with a post uh, cancer treatment in the breast uh, seen about three to five years in 30 percent of women and it should be um, in this case should be differentiated from recurrence. Uh, this is from the literature, but this is our case. Demonstrate the patient presented with bulbable abnormality due to this dystrophic type of calcification, with typic, which is typically thick irregular calcification within the plane of surgical scars. Okay. This is a 40 year old, uh, 45 year old lady. Uh, treated for breast cancer for invasive ductal carcinoma with conservative breast surgery and current asymptomatic. Uh, can you see any abnormality? What is the side? Which side of conservative breast surgery? The left breast. Left side. Excellent. Why? The size is smaller. Smaller. So look for the left. Concentrate on the left for any abnormality. There uh, are small punctate huh? calcification. Uh, Excellent. There is calcifications. There is punctate calcifications. Group of punctate calcification projected over mm -hmm. uh, the lateral upper. 
uh, and posterior side of the breast. The posterior, at posterior, outer central breast. Here, this is MLO at the center, at the posterior, and here it seemed to be at the lateral. So, uh -huh. what is next? Uh, magnification view. Okay, it, it looks the same on magnification view. Okay? The so they follow, they follow the patients and in the one year follow up, this is the one year follow up compared to the previous demonstrate. Increasing the number. Yes, so it's increasing and now it looks. Uh, with various uh, densities. So it is. Uh, suspicious classification. Group of polymorphic type okay. of, of classification. So this is the follow up demonstrate bleomorphic group of bleomorphic classification. So here it's supposed to be biopsy. Biopsy to exclude recurrence. Yes. This is important to exclude recurrence. And here we can see. Because this is non bulbable type, but definitely they use aware guidance, aware guidance to remove. Mm -hmm. And this is a specimen, a cont, uh, specimen, the radiograph demonstrates, okay, the calcifications with the wire seen within, and the calcification is bleomorphic. But fortunately for the patient, it was just evolving dystrophic type of classification. So dystrophic classification early on and also simulate malignant type of calcification, especially at the site of uh, previous uh, removing cancers. What is this type of classifications? Your uh, type with the uh, vascular type. Okay, these are sutures. This is, uh, this is suture calcification. Calcium deposit is in a suture material seen in post-operative, post-irradiated breast, and typically linear or tubular, and not like, not like the most characteristic, make it easy. Here might not make it easy for us to say this is suture, but when we see the knot, it will be easier to say this is suture calcification, which can simulate this type of, of classification. Rare, rare calcification in the breast can give the same appearance other than vascular calcifications. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Not sure, maybe the red like, large red like. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Not the red like. Uh huh. This one, that clear is. Okay the parasitic infection of the breast. You see, the commonest type of parasitic infections is filariasis. And it is known, it is seen in Africa and Asia, okay? And simulating this type of sutures calcifications, but it's rare. And what about this type of calcifications? Mm, around it. Uh -huh. The round punctate calcification. Excellent. These are typical round and punctate calcifications. You see? Here, this is the round calcification, and this is punctate calcifications. Again, this is round calcification, and this is punctate calcifications. And these, uh, before uh, punctate, is having a separate uh, or described as a separate descriptors, but in the fifth editions, they combined or they joined both round and punctate calcification into 
the same group of round calcifications. When, and as you know, these are lobular type of calcifications. And as we mentioned before, you see, when the, uh, the sinus, the lumen of the sinus is tiny, okay, can result in a punctate or pinpoint type of calcifications. And usually uh, when it is less than 0.5 millimeter, okay, representing like micro calcifications. But when it is between 0.5 to 1 millimeter size, uh, it described as around calcifications. And when are multiple, might be giving some variation in size and definitely in density. However, round and punctate calcifications usually seen in fibrocystic changes or adenosis, seen with skin calcifications, and rarely seen in a DCIS. So, when are small, less than one millimeter, whatever round or punctate. Okay, and diffusely scattered can be reported as bara two. And when seen in multiple groups, isolated groups, okay, and uh, or in a one group, punctate, and if there is no Brayer type, uh, Brayer ma uh, mammography for comparison, okay, we can consider it as Bayrat 4. However, we have to stop here. Why? Because it can be Bayrat 4. We are talking about typically benign calcification, but we can see Bayrat 4 here. Why? Punctate calcification punctate calcification can be or can represent Barat 4 warrant image guided biopsy when when it is suspicious if seen <clears throat> as grouped of heterogeneous size and density if it is heterogeneous might represent a DCIS if it is new on follow up it is alarming. If it is increasing on follow-up, might also be alarming. Or associated with suspicious distribution like linear or segmental, it will be alarming. Or if it is seen adjacent to an index cancer or non-cancer, it might also uh, be alarming. Okay, so at the screening mammography, identify calcification that do not clearly appear typical, B9 should be recalled and reported as Bayrat 0. Okay, we finish now from B9 calcifications. The Bayrat lexicon uh, prescribed descriptor for suspicious calcifications. If not typically B9 calcification, then we have to consider what? Mm -hmm. Biopsy. If not typical, then we have to see the morphology and go for the distribution of micro calcification to decide the level of suspicion. Is it by rat 4B or by rat 4C? Okay. Okay. So starting by suspicious morphology. What are the suspicious morphology? How many suspicious morphology do we have? Or how many suspicious morphology the Bayrat lexicons described? Uh, two. Two uh, alpha calcification and uh, bilimorphic calcification. What? Amorphous calcification and bilimorphic. Okay. You know two. Amorphous yes. and bilimorphic. No others? Uh, it is uh, other. I know it's high probability. Okay. Of my... you, describe, you describe two morphologies. Still, we have. Uh huh. Any volunteer? How many remaining uh, morphological four. descriptors? Huh? About, about four. four. 
Okay. Uh, amorphous what? type. Huh? Well, fine polymorphic. Okay, fine, fine linear branching. Excellent. Huh? Well, course heterogeneous. Excellent. Well done, Sarah. So, uh, suspicious. Uh, uh, the, there are four descriptors of falsifications morphology that usually indicate sufficient suspicious of malignancy to prompt a recommendation for biopsy. These include with increasing frequency for positive predictive value of malignancy, coarse heterogeneous, amorphous, fine polymorphic, and the fine linear or fine linear branching, which is more suspicious for malignancy. Okay, so what do you think this type? Mm -hmm. This is the part of MLO. And this is a spot magnification view for this type of classification. So how we can describe in terms of morphology? This is amorphous classification. Is it amorphous? What, what is the meaning of amorphous? Indistinct. Is it indistinct? This, this is indistinct? In, in, it has, um, not in, I can uh, see it. I can see it very well. This it is more conspicuous. This type of classification. So, of course, it uh, linear branching. Excellent. Uh, it is linear branching. Uh, linear branching. Coarse heterogeneous. It is coarse heterogeneous. Yes, this is a coarse heterogeneous. This is a coarse heterogeneous suspicious morphology. And in this case, definitely it's being reported as suspicious. If the patient having a history of uh, contralateral breast cancer, but fortunately for the patient, okay, uh, they found this just fibrous stromal calcifications. Okay, so these are uh, examples here of. Uh, coarse heterogeneous calcification. These three examples representing a DCIS, while in this example represent a fibroadenoma. Okay? And coarse heterogeneous, previously or formally, uh, formally they call it crush stone or coarse granular, like crushing stone giving larger granules. You see, larger irregular granules, that is why it's more conspicuous. These granules are between 0.1 to 1 millimeters, but it is less than 1 millimeters. It's important to know it is not more than 1 millimeter to differentiate it from other types. So that is why it is more conspicuous. That is why it is coarse and having tendency to coalesce. Okay, what is the positive predictive value for it? 75%. For citrogenous? No. We said this is the least, the least suspicious type, the least positive predictive value. We start with. Uh -huh. It is written 15%. 15%. Yes, it is the 15. Uh, it is the 15%. That is why it should be placed in Pirat. 4B category, where the positive predictive value range between more than 10, but less or equal to 50%. So numerous bilateral group of coarse calcifications, coarse heterogeneous calcification can be reported or coded as benign. Although baseline magnification view may be helpful, okay? However, single group of coarse heterogeneous calcifications, linear or segmental are suspicious with a positive predictive value of 15%. Frequent differential diagnosis is fibroadenoma as seen in this case, and stromal fibrosis as well as early dystrophic calcifications. Okay, so what about this type? Again, coarse heterogeneous. 
excellent. This is a core citrogenous type of pacifications. And this one? Trophic calcification. What is the difference between them? This is trophic and this core citrogenous. It looks more or less similar, but there are some difference between the two. The size? What? Excellent. And the density? Density. Uh-huh. Okay. Excellent. The most important is the size. We describe, we said, the course, it is coarse. And that is why it is obvious, it is conspicuous. More, it is more than, or from more than 0.5 of micro calcification. From 0.5 to one, and I was emphasized on one millimeter. I said, concentrate on this one millimeter. It is not more than one millimeter, not more than one millimeter. That is, can, be discriminating point between it and benign type of classification like rod like and like this dystrophic classification. This is post traumatic dystrophic and is more than one millimeter, while this irregular suspicious both are irregular. It's uh, irregular, uh, coarse hydrogenous, uh, conspicuous, generally between 0.5 and one millimeter size variable size and shape and tend to qualis, okay? Smaller than uh, the similar shape of dystrophic calcification, which is more than one millimeter. Course, course heterogeneous can be seen early, in early evolving uh, or as early in trauma in case of early evolving dystrophic. Early evolving dystrophic can be started as a course heterogeneous then progress into the uh, dystrophic type of calcification. And can you see the difference between these two? This is, we have seen both. This is the coarse hydrogenous and this. Rot line. The, what is the difference between them? Um, the the rod like are regular rods. Excellent. And uh -huh. uh, the size, yani, uh, uh, they take the shape of a duct uh -huh. or the distribution of a duct. Uh -huh. and, uh, the, uh, they re are regular in yani, shape. Irregular. The, yes, excellent. Are regular. Excellent. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, the dystrophic, uh, the coarse heterogeneous is irregular with variable sizes. Uh -huh. And uh, it's Entropy not. Are interrupted. This is the DCIS, okay? Mm -hmm. Is interrupted, okay? Uh, interrupted, interrupted, inhomogeneous density, uh, irregular shape, variable shape, variable density. Variable everything is even it is a bleomorphic, but it is a coarse, it's not a fine bleomorphic, it is a coarse bleomorphic type, giving different shape, different size, different densities, while the rod like having a regular shape, taking conforming the duct, having smooth borders. Okay, because usually with secretory type, there is atrophy of the epithelia. There is no proliferation of the epithelia uh, to give some irregularity in the wall uh, or in the calcification, the secretion. Unlike in the malignancy, you see the debris or the, 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 the cellular debris is usually associated with proliferations and the calcifications usually is interrupted and even and irregular. You got it. So how this is more homogeneous, more smooth, more having a, a regular shape, uh, having a, a more density. Even if you look for the density, you will see it here. It is relatively dense, relatively dense. And the density is more or less homogeneous throughout the calcifications. While this having variable density, having variable shape, having variable size, interrupted and so forth. And here 
it is more variability, more polymorphism. However, it is really it is not a fine polymorphic. It is coarse type of uh, this variability. Okay. Uh, what about this type of calcification? Amorphous calcification. Amorphous calcifications. Excellent. So this is the second suspicious calcifications, which is amorphous. Uh, it is indistinct type. Before, before the terms, it was indistinct calcifications, but no more descriptors used indistinct. Now it is amorphous. It is a powder like. It is fine. It is hazy. See, that is why flake type, uh, it is round, but it is hazy. Okay, so it is difficult to characterize further its morphology. Its shape difficult to be clearly visualized, clearly seen, because it is too hazy type of calcifications. And usually baseline magnification is really helpful to uh, evaluate it. Okay, what is the positive predictive value of amorphous type of classifications? Mm -hmm. 20, 25. Okay, yes. Huh? About, it is about, yes. Uh, it is 20. The positive predictive value is 20%. Therefore, it should be placed into BIRAD 4B, moderate suspicion for malignancy. And it is usually associated with low grade type of BCIS. When there is malignancy, representing just a low grade type of a BCIS. And it is more suspicious if it is associated with a malignant type or more suspicious type of uh, distribution, like linear or segmental, okay? But we'll, uh, we'll see, it can be just representing a BIRAD 2 type of uh, lexicon coding, okay, or uh, grading. So, this is amorphous classification. In the first example, representing a DCIS, while in the second example, representing a fibrocystic uh, changes or fibrocystic uh, conditions. Okay, in both represent uh, this is amorphous group, and this is group of amorphous along with polymorphic, but and reported as BIRAT4, but still the biopsy result it was just a benign process of fibrocystic. Amorphous calcification. 20% of which can represent high risk lesions like atypical ductal hyperplasia, atypical lobular hyperplasia, or lobular carcinoma in situ. And 60% represent benign uh, calcifications or benign conditions like uh, fibrocystic or babyloma or fibroadenoma or sclerosing adenosis. So, especially when diffuse and bilateral may classify it as BIRA2, B9 type of classifications. And when multiple bilateral group can be coded as BIRA3, but it will be suspicious if when it is unilateral group and uh, or uh, in linear or segmental distribution, or when it is seen as a new or a follow-up, or uh, in a patient having contralateral malignancy. Okay, what about this type of classifications? Coarse heterogeneous classification. And this is fine, but this is a magnification view. Make it more obvious. It is, it is less than 0.5. OK. 
Polymorphic. So this is fine. Yes. This is fine polymorphic. Okay. Okay. So the fine polymorphic is the third suspicious morphology. And we have to differentiate it from amorphous and from the coarse heterogeneous. It is more conspicuous than amorphous and less conspicuous than the coarse heterogeneous. It's also early or formally named as um, fine granular or crush stone. Okay, the crush stone usually result in variable size of fragments, but in the coarse heterogeneous, the fragments are large, while in fine polymorphic, the fragments are fine. Okay, however, are more visualized than the amorphous classifications. Okay, but usually is less than 0.5 millimeter in diameter. That is why differentiated from the coarse heterogeneous. And as we mentioned, is more conspicuous than the amorphous classification. What is the positive predictive value? 40 to 50 percent. Mm -hmm. It has How much? Um, about 70. 70? 70%. Today we cannot hear you, Hannah. You have problem today. You have problem in the in your microphone or something. No? Any volunteer? What is the positive predictive value of fine polymorphic? Uh, 40 to 50 percent. Okay. Accept it. It is the yeah. They they describe it as twenty nine percent, but in other study they mention up to fifty percent. But still, it is within the Bayrat four B. It is within the Bayrat four B, but having a higher probability of malignancy than the amorphous and than the coarse heterogeneous form. You see, it's more heterogeneous. The coarse heterogeneous is 15, the amorphous is 20, while this is about 30, and in some studies they mention up to uh, 50%. But it's still up to 50 is still within the Bayrat 4B. So up to now, we have the three types of suspicious morphology representing Bayrat 4B. Okay? but with increasing positive predictive value. The least is coarse heterogeneous, then amorphous, and then the fine bilimorphic. So the fine bilimorphic associated with intermediate grade of BCIS. When the bilimorphic, fine bilimorphic tend to be uh, uh, DCIS, most of the time it is of intermediate great and also associated with calcified fibroadenoma okay what about this type of classifications fine polymorphic classification excellent same this is the fine polymorphic classification what is the difference between the two how you can grade the two image How you code it? Abir, where are you? You are not with us today? Abir El Hadi. Huh? Let us go. We have a lot of examples. Let us see. This is the distribution. Mm -hmm. huh? The difference is in the distribution. Uh huh. What else? 
if I ask you to code the, the, the fine bilimorphic on the left image, you will give uh, it by five, right? five because it is associated as well with the speculated mass. Excellent. Well done. This it will be by right five. Yes, you are right, hundred percent. This is this will be coded as by right five because it is associated with the mass. While this is segmented distributions, it will be graded as by right four. And it was a high grade DCIS, but not because of bilimorphic. It's upgraded because of the distribution. The distribution. See the distribution upgrading the 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 okay and also associated with a fine linear type of classification, while this is by rat uh, by rat five. So okay, what about this type? Uh, this is uh, fine uh, linear branching. Excellent. This is a fine linear and linear branching type of classifications. These uh, usually associated with high grade type of the CIS and typical of malignancy. This is our patients. You see, demonstrating what? There is area of distortion associated with fine linear classifications, okay? And on spot magnification, it seemed to be a speculated mass. So it will be by right five. five because of the underlying mass. Because we said, we did not say in the suspicious morphology there is by right five. There are by right four B, and by rat for C. C. So what about the fine linear branching or casting the positive predictive value of it? It is higher. Yeah, it is higher. It is. Mm -hmm. About. 70%. Okay. Uh, we said this is more suspicious. It is fine, less than 0.5. It is irregular classification. It is thin, linear, maybe discontinuous, occasionally branching. You said the positive. I heard you from far. 60%. Huh? 60%. Sixty percent, or yes, or more. Uh huh. Yes, it's a by uh, four. Yes, it is a, it definitely. It is above fifty. Since it is by rat force, uh, this is the by rat force, but it will be. It is seventy. The positive predictive value is seventy. So it is by rat 4 C, high suspicious for malignancy. And it's associated, usually associated with the high grade, high grade DCIS. And so regardless of distributions, if you have seen this fine linear branching, you see, you will put it as by rat 4 C. Okay. So what is the difference between these? Um, the the one is very like mm, yeah, the it, is one, the it is linear like like the course uh, the course heterogeneous to be differentiated from the rod like same as to differentiate fine linear branching the, even this is more suspicious See, however, the difference in fine linear branches is more fine, is less than 0.5, but more or less same as the coarse heterogeneous, is irregular, is interrupted, is different, uh, different densities, different shapes, and even if it is linear, it is interrupted, 
is haphazardly distributed. You see? And all these changes can differentiate it from the typical benign appearing of rod like type of calcifications. Okay? Look for this rod, this what? The casting types, the fine linear type. Look how it is haphazard. See, having a haphazard, disorderly, haphazard pattern. And even because of this, there is a theory that they mentioned that there might be new duct formation or new duct genesis, like new vasculogenesis, new vascularity. Describing malignancy, even they describe that there might be this haphazard pattern of a lot of uh, duct-like casting type of calcification. They describe that might be uh, the new, this numerosity uh, might suggest uh, new duct formations in the process of malignancy that represent this appearance. Okay, so we finished the size and morphology and now we have to describe the distributions which uh, as we, we mentioned before is a descriptor used to indicate arrangement of classification in press. Okay so distribution is at least as important as morphology okay as a predictor for malignancy. Distribution of classification has been simplified in the fifth editions by eliminating the term scattered and the term clustered. No more use of scattered or clustered and remaining five descriptors. What are these five descriptors of the distributions? Mm -hmm. Diffuse. Diffuse. Uh, grouped. Grouped. Regional, regional, uh, linear and segmental, linear and segmental. Excellent. So diffuse, regional, grouped, linear, and segmental. Also with increasing frequency of suspicions. See, the least suspicious is diffuse, and the most suspicious is segmental. Okay, so these illustrations representing all the five descriptors of uh, distributions, the focal larger area uh, of regional, not conforming ductal, scattered throughout in a form of diffuse, taking a triangle or a pyramid pointing toward the nipple in a segmental or uh, arranged in a lines in a linear type of uh, distributions. So this is the diffuse uh, distribution. It is randomly distributed or scattered throughout the breast. However, historically described as scattered, no more scattered terminology in the new uh, the editions and punctate and amorphous. And this distribution is almost always benign. If it is, especially if are bilateral, just it will be barat too. Okay. If you look here, bilateral diffuse punctate or round calcifications or micro calcification but we have to pay attention for any suspicious type within these scattered classifications before confidently report it as viral too. Look and follow it thoroughly to exclude any group of uh, classification seen within. So if it is just a viral too, no follow up or biopsy needed. Okay.
regional calcifications is calcification with within a large area more than two centimeters or greater in greater dimension or more, not conforming a ductal distribution. This is important why to differentiate it from segment. If it is having the same region involved by calcification, but in a pyramidal shapes pointing uh, toward the nipple, it will be segmental. If it is not conforming the uh, distribution, it will be a regional. And there is difference between the two in terms of positive predictive value. That the, the segmental is more highly suspicious while the regional is less. So usually the regional B9. However, we have to consider the morphology as well. It might upgrade it. Okay, what is the positive predictive value? We have seen in the previous slides. Hmm? The positive Not predictive value. Uh, hmm? What? 26. Was yes. it 26? Yes. Uh, the positive predictive value is 26. So it is by rat for B. Okay. So this is examples of regional distributions uh, involving uh, round and rim uh, calcification uh, in a patient having a seatbelt injury. The presentive diagnosis is fat necrosis. We brought it to see the distribution of calcification in a larger area, not conforming a ductal system. Oh. Previously, in the previous editions, they described the group calcification when multiple calcific obesity seen within one centimeter area. And the regional calcification, if there is calcification, within two centimeter area or more. So what about the gap between one and two centimeter? If we have calcification within 1.8 centimeter, one and a half centimeter, how we could call it? So at current editions, latest editions, they make it near, they, uh, make it close, they increase the distance for the group to be either one centimeter or up to two centimeter area to fill this gap and make and bring the regional to the group. Less than two centimeter, it will be group. Two centimeter or more, it will be or more than two centimeters, it will be regional, and up to two centimeters, it will be group. So the group distribution of calcifications, historically, it was cluster, no more use of cluster. However, you will find it in a lot of articles, old articles and old books, because it is just changed in 2013. Uh, relatively few, calcification occupying small portion of a tissue, a minimum of five calcification within a cubic centimeter. Lower limit, five calcifications group together within one cubic centimeter of each other. This is, we call it a group. Or more than five larger number of calcifications are grouped within two centimeters of each other. Though historically, it was only one centimeter, cubic centimeter area to define the group. But at current, two centimeter areas, okay? Up to two centimeters, we can still call it group. Okay, can you recommend biopsy for group less than five particles per cubic, per one cubic centimeter? Ali. 
tá? Can you recommend biopsy? I think yes, if there is associated features. Excellent, well done. Yes, yes, if the morphology is highly suspicious, yes, we still can recommend biopsy for particles less than five in one centimeter or growth, okay? What is the positive predictive value of growth? We are going in order of frequency, of increasing frequency. So it will be more than 26 since it's coming after regional. So it is 31. The positive predictive value is 31. It is virus 4B. So regional and group both are by rat 4b okay what about this image the above one is regional and the below one is grouped why the above one is two centimeter and the lower one is one centimeter so both are grouped. I thought the above one is more. So both are grouped. Okay. Yeah. So now, now you consider group up to two centimeters. That is why we have to pay attention for that. Okay. So we are we are dealing with what we call this. Uh, fine. Uh, group to the, the they, shape. They have. The... They they brought for you the magnification for the same. So. Mm -hmm. More, more or less having both same morphology. If we have the same morphology, different group of same morphology, we can say these are multiple groups, okay? Multiple similar groups are described in the report when there are more than group of classification having the same morphology, okay? okay. So as in this case, Look for this. These are multiple groups, okay? But of round calcification, of round calcifications. Multiple groups of round calcification. You see? Multiple groups of round calcifications. That is why it is BIRAD 3. Okay? Let us see this. Here we have isolated group of different classifications. All these cases are DCIS. All the cases here are cases of DCIS. However, if we consider the group distribution, we'll say it is a BIRAT 4B. But if you look here, this is BIRAT 4B, but this is three are BIRAT 4C. Why? How you can explain this? However, the distribution is grouped. All the distribution, we have five cases. When we talk about the distribution is grouped type of classification regarding the distribution. So regarding the distribution, it is by rat 4B. But when we go to the morphology, this is coarse heterogeneous. It's also by rat 4B. So the coded by rats, it will be B, 4B. Here, this is a fine polymorphic, also coded as by rat 4B. And the distribution by rat 4B, that is why the final management or the final assessment, it will be by rat 4B. But if we look for this, this is mixed type of leomorphic and linear classification. Since I have a linear classification, 
So regardless of distribution, it has to be upgraded to IRAT 4C. Yes. And in this case, you see, these are both fine linear type of classification, regardless of distribution, the uh, final assessment, it should be coded as BIRAT 4C. Is it clear now? Is it clear for you? Yes, Dr. I, we said we said when we we we, we uh, assess the calcification, we have to consider both morphology and distribution. Okay, and we will take by the highest, uh, the more suspicious uh, descriptors. Yes. If the morphology is more uh, is more suspicious, we have to consider it and upgrade it. And if the distribution is more suspicious, we have to upgrade it also. But if both having the same grade, so it will be the same as in these examples, polymorphic, as well as group distribution, both are by rat 4 b and coarse heterogeneous, as well as group having both by rat 4 b Okay. If we look for these five examples, also representing group distribution, but in this case, the morphology is round calcification. That is why labeled as Vira 3, probably B9, and it was even stable for more than three years then. While in this group, you see, it is polymorphic, fine polymorphic, reported as BIRAD 4B, for which biopsy performed, but it turned out to be a fibrocystic in a 44-year-old lady in screening mammography. While in this case, having an able start, okay, there are about nine rounded calcifications in a one centimeter area as group in retroareal regions with underlying asymmetry. So uh, biopsy performed and it was a babyloma. And in this case, you see this amorphous calcifications in a group, okay? And uh, it, it is, was by rat 4B and it was just a lobular uh, carcinoma in situ in screening mammography. But up to 30% of these uh, lobular carcinoma in situ uh, on surgical excision found to be associated with underlying malignancy and their treatment is controversial. Okay, so regarding the number of classifications in a group, the greater the number of micro classification in a smaller area, more suspicious for malignancy. So if group is loose, you see, a loose group, that means yani, less than 10 per cubic centimeters, it, that is more likely to represent the benign conditions, while the compact, the more compact cluster or more compact group is more suspicious, okay. If you look here, these uh, four examples of group uh, classification and even <laughs> five examples of group of classifications. Can you show me the morphology for this group? The differential diagnosis, fibroadenoma, fat necrosis, two example of DCIS, and this example, fibroadenomatoid changes. Distribution is group, but what about the morphology? Uh, what about the morphology? The first one is coarse heterogeneous, uh, where it is recent fibroadenoma. And huh? the second one is also coarse heterogeneous. Uh -huh. The third one is fine pleomorphic. 
Okay. So these all are coarse heterogeneous. Coarse heterogeneous. Mm -hmm. But this is, yes, they describe it as four coarse heterogeneous, but I might go more, agree with you. It looks like a, a, a fine polymorphic. But even described as a coarse heterogeneous type might be, they find it uh, larger than 0.5. Is isolated group coarse heterogeneous by rat 4B. All are by rat 4B because group by rat 4B and coarse heterogeneous is by rat 4B. And even if we consider this to be a fine bilimorphic, also it will be a by rat 4B. But look for the differential diagnosis from malignant to benign. All of the differential diagnosis can be included. Okay, so uh, when we say morphological suspicious or uh, distribution suspicious, not always necessarily to be 100% malignant, but we have to exclude malignancy. Okay, regarding the distribution of classifications, number four, the linear type is arrayed or classification arrayed in a line and elevate the level of suspicion for malignancy because it's a just a deposit in a duct and it tend to distribute it in, in a, line, a linear uh, manner because most common malignancies are ductal as we mentioned before beginning in the terminal duct and just we have to remember Vascular and rod like calcifications are also linear in distribution but are typically benign. So, what is the positive predictive value of linear? About 60%. Yes, excellent, well done. Yes, it is 60%. The positive predictive value is 60%. Okay, so here. I have linear distributions in uh, these three examples. See, these are linear distributions. This is fine polymorphic. The biopsy turned out to be sclerosing adenosis. This is another fine polymorphic linear turned out to be DCIS. And this is linear fine a fine linear uh, morphology as well as, uh, as well as linear distribution. So it is, uh, it tend to be DCIS. How you are going to code or to assess this type? This will be virat. You will give virat. For the first example, it will be Bayrat. Bayrat 5. Why? Bayrat 4C. Uh, yes. uh -huh. And this example? 4C. And this? 4B. Why? Because it is uh, biliomorphic. Biliomorphic is uh, Bayrat 4B. Uh-huh. So, but in distribution. we'll downgrade it. We said we have to consider distribution and morphology. And we have to take or to code with the highest or the more suspicious one. So, here, since we have linear distributions, regardless of morphology, you have to upgrade. Yes. We have to upgrade it to Virat 4C, regardless. Okay? It's supposed to be Virat 4C, regardless of morphology. Polymorphic or linear, we have to put it Virat 4C. If it is only calcification, not associated with other things, presenting as a calcification, considering the distribution, we have to report it as Virat 4C, okay? okay? But not necessarily always to turn out to be uh, 
uh, malignant. As in these examples, it was a benign sclerosing agnosis. But even though, if we have seen again similar lesions, we'll recommend biopsy for it. Okay. The latest distribution uh, descriptor is segmental, which conforming adducted uh, and its branches. And it, it is of concern, why? Because they suggest a deposit in a duct and its branch. As it's conforming, it is distributions. So raising possibility of extensive multifocal. The linear suspicion for malignancy in a segment or in a part of the breast was segmental usually uh, erasing the possibility of multifocal cancer in a loop or segment of the breast. What is a positive predictive value? 65. Okay, maybe 60 plus 62. 62. It is a 62, it is barat 4C also. So we have two, representing by rat 4 b which is regional and group, and two representing by rat 4 c which is linear and segmental. While in morphology, we have only one representing by rat 4 c and the others are representing by rat 4 b Okay. However, in the, in the segmental, we have to consider the B9 type of classification like secretory, which you can also representing as a focal or secretory or a segmental distributions. Okay. What is the difference in these two cases? Here I have. Mm -hmm. uh, on the left is a uh, indistinct amorphous classification. Uh, and on the right, uh, it is uh... written here. It is. I told you. You yeah. see, I I I had I had uh, viral. It's been infected. The lecture infected by a virus. That is why it removed almost most of the of the animations. And I tried to retain this, but I felt for some this escape for some of the slices. But it is written here, this is supposed to be animated, not clear now. But it's obviously this is segmental, segmental polymorphic calcifications, but in the first case, not associated with underlying distortions or uh, uh, masses or thickening or whatever. While in the other example here, it's associated with underlying masses, with uh, distortions, with nibble retraction, with thickening of the skin. So this is by rat. This, uh, this is by rat five, while this is, it will be by rat four. Four C, because of? The distribution. The distribution, Segmental not because of morphology. Because of distribution, it is by rat 4C. Because of distributions. Okay? Because of distributions. So this is by rat 4C. And the result of biopsy was atypical vector hyperplasia. Well, the other one, this example, this is my patient. I remember her was elderly woman presented with the bulbable abnormality and little retractions in her left breast and the biopsy revealed invasive ductal carcinoma and DCIS. I agree. Okay, so here we have suspicious morphology. Amorphous type of calcification. What is the difference in distribution between the three examples and how we can grade these examples? According to amorphous, it should be by rat 4B. Okay. In the first example here, this is the distribution is group. So it will be by rat uh, 4B. 4B. And this one? Linear. Linear. So it will be 4C. 
And this one is? Mental. So it will be? For C. Okay. So the first one for B, but these are, it should be for C due to distribution, not to morphology. The first example, it was sclerosing adenosis, while the result in the linear was benign duct calcification and this segmental, it was DCIS. Okay, uh -huh. and this example? Uh, the first one is diffuse. Uh -huh. And the second one is uh, not for linear. Linear. Like that, yes. This is a nipple going toward the nipple. Linear, yes. Huh? It is linear. It is not one. Are multiple. Huh? Segmental. Segmental. Yes. Okay. But the morphology. Uh, round classification. You said this segmental and you said this what? Diffuse. Diffuse, excellent. This is diffuse and this is segmental. Regarding the morphology, this we call it? Round. Round, excellent. This is round calcification. So, the by right here, it will be? Uh, round, by right two. By right two. Oh, excellent. This is by right two. Because it is round calcification, yes, and also the patient having similar in contralateral pressure. This is by two. What about this one? It will be by right? Heterogeneous. Huh? Four C. It will four. be four C. It's also round. It's also round calcifications. But because of distribution, because of distribution, it will be by rat four C. It is also round. Okay, that prompt B9 or probably B9. But due to segmented distribution, we have to code as by rat four C and the biopsy turn out to be DCIS. Look for the difference. The distribution, you see, change everything. So we have to consider both distribution as well as morphology. And here, this is regarding the distribution. It is um, regional. This is less than two centimeters. So grouped. And this is span over three centimeters. Um, this is regional. Huh? Regional. Regional, excellent. And this is pointing span in three centimeter pyramid toward the nipple. Segmental. Segmental. So, uh, what about the morphology? These are very clear. These are clear, very clear. Fine, this is fine. Fine, bilimorphic. This, this is bilimorphic. This is This is branching. Fine, fine, fine. These are fine. Linear and linear branching, both. And this, it, it can be some, uh, this might be coarse heterogeneous or polymorphic because it magnified, it looks like a coarse heterogeneous. Okay. So here, this group also fine linear. I told you it looks like fine linear, but a little bit might be because of the, because of the magnification make it bigger. So these are three as a fine linear classifications. But this one, okay, uh, it is grouped till we have to upgrade it because of the morphology. And the biopsy turned out to be benign. And this, the, re, the, morph the distribution is regional, but also because of the morphology, you see, the, uh, coded as by RAT4C, and turn out to be DCIS. 
and expected also this to be DCIS. You see, this is also uh, same fine linear. Even if you look, the more ugly, the more suspicious you can suspect. If you, if I ask you, what is the more suspicious, most suspicious in this? You will tell me this is the least one. Uh, the three more having the same morphology, but a little bit different from one to one. Uh, but the distributions, this is the segmental, is uh, coded three, C, I mean. And this is the regional, should be coded B and group coded B. But this regional and group upgraded to C because of morphology. And in these examples, Uh huh. What about these examples? Here I have group. Group. More or less, and this is span in a large area like this. Span regional. And this one is pointing toward the nipple segment. segmental. So all it looks like fine polymorphic type of classification. I suggest it looks like fine polymorphic. But this is group and this is regional and this is segmental and only not only segmental, associated with underlying Massive. asymmetries, asymmetries, region, uh, global asymmetry. So how you are going to cut this one, this one it will be? 4B. 4B, excellent. And this one? Uh, 4B. 4B, excellent. And this one? 4C. Four. Huh? Four Five. Five, excellent, excellent. Yes, this will be for B, and the result was biopsy sclerosing adenosis. That one, <clears throat> the fine regional fine polymorphic for B, and it turned out to be DCIS. And this, the third one, is segmental fine polymorphic with associated asymmetries, bar at five, and it turned out to be DCIS. Okay. So we complete the size morphology and distributions. Let us see the associated features. <clears throat> okay, what about this example? Here I have. Uh, fine polymorphic. Fine polymorphic. And here this also fine polymorphic. But the difference, as we mentioned before, in this case, this is our patient. You see, the fine polymorphic associated with in a segmental a distribution and associated with underlying. Huh? Asymmetry. What? Asymmetry. I can say here asymmetry, but in spot magnification, it's obviously an irregular mass. Yes. See? Associated with an irregular mass, so this will be by rat. Five. Five, and this it will be. 4B. This it will be 4B. And this will be 5. Yes. You see? This 4B, both are, uh, are uh, polymorphic classifications. But this is because of the associated features upgrading. The, uh, and the case, it was invasive ductal carcinoma associated with DCIS. OK. And this case, uh, it was a fibrocystic changes from the literature. Okay, this is what this interesting case. What you can see here? Popcorn. Okay. So, how you are going to grade these patients? Tomography. Um, how you are going to report it? Pyra two. No, it is uh, an area of architectural distortion. Excellent. Um, well, then who's talking? Chair. 
Excellent, Suhair. Ha? Above the, oh, yes, above uh, the popcorn classification and area of architecture distortion. Uh -huh. So, is the, the, the popcorn classification associated with surrounding okay, architectural distortion. So, suppose not to be reported as pirate. Well, I have to go further. So, next. Upgrade. Uh, and to do a uh, spot magnification uh, view. Uh -huh. And also, there was some thickening compared to the contralateral. Thin thickening. You see? Uh, not available right now. The other breast. This is our patient. This is my patient. So I had done ultrasound. This is the ultrasound. Yes. Oh. Sure. An irregular. Um, irregular mass with posterior caustic shadowing and macro calcification. Uh, this is yeah. by rat for biopsy. By rat? For biopsy. Right. Yeah, by rat for. And even here, there was a cutting signs obscured by this uh, posterior shadowing. And biopsy uh, of this case revealed invasive cancer. Uh, to wrap up, is there is a uh, trabecular thickening in uh, in this mammography? Yes, yes, yes. If you look here, this is distortion. This is there is surrounding distortion and edema, and even yes. even here the trabecular yes are thickened, and there is a skin thickening. It was a case of of cancer, and how you can explain this? This course type of classification representing long-standing process by convoluting fibroadenoma, but at the same moment we have invasive cancer. How you can explain? Uh, Uh, maybe there is there was uh, some sort of necrosis in the um, tissue of the tumor. Okay, or calcification, or you mean dystrophic calcification in uh, on cancer in basic cancer, or or transformation from benign in the benign lesion. Medina. Yeah. Where are you? I'm, I'm here. <laughs> you are welcome. Mm, yes. Hi. Yes. I'm always here. Yes. What about mm -hmm. associate? What about the risk of uh, cancer in uh, related to or associated cancer with the fibroadenoma? I don't know exactly, but I uh, yes. there may be. Yes, fibroadenoma is a heterogeneous lesion having epithelial and stromal element. Although it considered benign, but there is evidence of malignant transformation available. Mm -hmm. And associated uh, with increased risk of breast cancer in a complex fibroadenoma. We described before in our lectures one case uh, an asymmetry, I suspect, that the case it was a complex type of fibroadenoma. We have simple fibroadenoma and we have complex. The complex one is associated with proliferative disease, mm. okay, or proliferative disease accom uh, accompanying fibroadenoma. And mm. epithelial hyperplasia is a frequent observation in a fibroadenoma. With the atypical ADH occurring in 0.8% of fibroadenoma. And the uh, mm -hmm. risk will increase with relevant family history in these type of patients having a fibroadenoma. And the cancer, invasive cancer, can either develop within a fibroadenoma or develop in the breast tissue uh, adjacent to fibroadenoma and hold into the <laughs> fibroadenoma. And the pathology result might tend to be 
invasive cancer associated with fibroadenoma or the reverse, or fibroadenoma coexists with uh, invasive cancer and so on. Mm -hmm. See? And the fibroadenoma carcinoma association varies between 0.1% to 0.3%. Very, very small percentage, but I don't know if we are lucky, but the patient unlucky, we have one case in our experience, you see. Mm -hmm. And they describe in the literature, these typical malignant changes in fibroadenoma are found after excision incidentally. And the big age is 42 to 44 years, okay? Mm -hmm. And the preoperative evaluation, clinical and radiological, are not sufficient to estimate the malignant changes in fibroadenoma. So we have to pay attention for, for that while we are following a fibroadenoma. Mm -hmm. This patient presented with uh, changes in heart rest, uh, bulbable bulb abnormality, and I think some pain or something, I don't remember exactly, but presented, it, it was not an incidental, it was not just a routine follow up. She had uh -huh. a complaint, she had a complaint, she had a mm -hmm. complaint. And mm -hmm. I don't, uh, she had no previous, available previous follow, uh, previous images for comparison. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we finished size, morphology, distribution, and associated features like other abnormality classification, it has to be uh, described where exactly within the uh, breast on mammography, the location descriptors is important. This is an example having three areas of classifications. And this is a spot magnification view here. They describe this spot magnification view, group of polymorphic classification, uh, for the superior anterior, okay, classification on the standard view. So when we talk about uh, uh, classification or uh, the lesions, we have to describe exactly where in the breast. They describe it as the superior anterior right breast. And these other two are those lying here at the posterior breast, the superior one, demonstrate a group of uh, or cluster of uh, bleomorphic. And this is typical Bob Korn, uh, both of which this is definitely is obviously representing involuted fibroadenoma. And this is early classification in uh, involuting fibroadenoma. And as we mentioned before, fine bleomorphic and coarse heterogeneous and amorphous all of these type of classification can be associated with early hyalinization in a fibroadenoma or early fibroadenoma, hyalinized fibroadenoma. Add in this example, but the first group, this anterior group turned out to be ductal carcinoma in situ. Again, this space, this obviously here, the spot magnification view, but I can see the nipple. So I'm talking about an area just in retroareolar region. When I talk about this is again more magnifications of this area. So I'm talking about the retroareolar region, polymorphic classification tend out to be a typical vector hyperplasia in screening mammography of about 70 year old lady. So not necessarily all microclassifications or suspicious microclassification to be malignant. How you can look, uh, look like this microclassifications? Ah. Volunteer. Show me the localizations, how you can describe the localization of this. Central, medial, anterior, one third or the retroareolar region? Again, again, the left, again breast, left breast, left, uh -huh. From the PC, it is medial. Left medial. Uh -huh. and, and from the MLO, it is uh, central. 
central excellent and in the depths in the depths in the intermediate uh, one third or the middle one third the middle in one the third. mostly or the maximum in the middle in the middle extending to the anterior okay yes this is the distributions and what about the the classification itself it is growth uh, morphology and distribution uh, fine pleomorphic grouped is it grouped is a fine polymorphic. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No? it is re uh, regional. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. It is segmental. 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 Can you see it going toward the nipple? Pointing yeah. toward the nipple. Look how it is segmental. You see, it yeah. is pointing toward the nipple. Exactly what you are. It is segmental, polymorphic. It is bilateral, four C. And then look here. And even some foci of linear type of classification, polymorphic and linear. So it is by rat 4C due to segmental distribution and diagnosis it was a DCIS. So we complete all these descriptors and now remaining the change over time. At the screening mammography, interval change, simply a notable difference on the second or third scan in comparison to a previous scan. Typically, they might be changed or they may be changed in size, number, configuration, and pattern of microcosm. Change in the dense tissue or contour of a mass is fairly definite sign of malignancy. However, or but changes in the pattern of microclassification is thought to be less reliable indicator of Microclassification, however, interval progressions of classification with an area, definite area, still can indicate malignancy, especially the number of individual classification, the size uh, of the involved area significantly increase over time. You got it. Okay. This a little bit confusing area, this change over time, but try to concentrate a little bit. If just the size of individual existing classification increase, this is not necessarily uh, to, 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 uh, to indicate this type of classification is malignant, since benign classification can also increase. But even uh, the underlying abnormality is usually benign. If we have seen the size of the individual classification is increased, this is more significant or more reflections, uh, more reflecting the benignity. Why? As we described before, the dystrophic type of classification uh, early on can be fine by time increasing in size and uh, giving the typical coarse, large, irregular appearance. Uh, Bob Corn classification of involuting fibroadenoma can start early as amorphous, can start early as coarse heterogeneous, can start early as fine polymorphic, and with time growing, growing, growing in size and getting larger and giving the typical benign classification. And so forth, classif early classification in secretions within a duct in plasma cell mastitis with time can increase and filling the whole secretion within the ducts, giving the typical large rod light. So increased size of the particle of calcification is going more with benign type of calcification rather than malignant type of calcification. However, let us see. This, this uh, diagnostic difficulties may occur when a benign lesion such as fibroadenoma is just beginning to calcify, as we described just earlier. In these cases, we need to do short-term follow-up. It might help us to make sure clearly the nature of the calcification or the benign nature of calcification. If it's getting larger, going more toward typical benign type, so it will solve the problem. 
due to sometimes very slow growth of DCIS, the low grade DCIS, uh, even documented classification stability over a period of two to three years may not entirely ruled out malignancy. I have, even in my experience, I have, I have shown to you before one case, <laughs> for, uh, it was, and it, it demonstrated very minimal increase in calcification after three years. The patient came uh, having segmented, punctate segmental calcifications, and she escaped and she came back after three years to demonstrate slight change or a slight increase in the extent of the calcifications. But so with low grade DCIS, uh, you might see stability over years. So stability over years, not always entirely exclude malignancy. Another potential bit false is suspicious, but is stable calcifications within dense breast parenchyma. In these cases, you might, uh, the, the, uh, the soft tissue component might increase, but the calcification appears stable. And due to the breast density, we could not appreciate the progression of that soft tissue uh, component of the invasive cancers. So in these cases, we have to uh, to use the ultrasound or to depend on ultrasound and magnetic resonance imaging, okay, can helping us to uh, evaluate this type of uh, uh, malignancy with the stable calcification, but the associated soft tissue component definitely on ultrasound will be better clarified uh, or on MRI, it might show a suspicious type of enhancement could not be appreciated on a dense mammography. So accurate measurement, sorry, accurate measurements of the size uh, of breast cancer, as you know, is important, not only in staging, but also in treatment planning and has become increasingly important in preoperative evaluation as breast conserving surgery is frequently replacing mastectomy. So always we are describing, we have to measure the size of, of the lesions. But in case of calcification, regarding the size of calcific particles, it will determine uh, it will discriminate between benign and malignancy in terms of macro or micro calcification. But the size of the calcifications, the measurement for the size of the calcifications in terms of area of, uh, of uh, uh, malignancy or <clears throat> malignant lesions to be treated. Uh, is the whole extent of the calcifications within the breast. This is how to measure the maximum extent. Measure the maximum extent, okay? So uh, the maximum extent within the breast, we have to measure it. And on interval, okay, to, to, to talk about the calcification growth rate, it refers to the uh, extent of calcification rather than the size or number of individual calcification. When we said the growth of calcifications is stable, that means as in this case of fibrocystic, it was in the previous image was five millimeter, the maximum dimensions of the maximum extent, which was also after two years mammogram giving the same extent. While in the other example of this DCIS, the, uh, there is increase in extent by 100%. In the early mammogram, it was three millimeters, extending to six millimeter over two years follow-up. So that is 
how we measure the size of calcifications, lesions on mammography. Okay, so DCIS has a faster growth rate than benign breast diseases, and it can hence be uh, a discriminating factors in evaluating calcification, but not always the case. Stability, calcification is stable for uh, greater than two years can be considered benign by RATCO. Is it for all type of calcifications? Yeah? No, as the example you mentioned just now. No, okay, not for yeah. all time. So not for all time. So there is conflicting data concerning the <laughs> <part> of... <laughs> <laughs> Who is talking? There are there are conflicting data concerning the value of absence of change over time. Okay, let us see this example. This is round calcifications. Yeah, there is this is group. This is group and this is regional distribution. Morphology is round. So it will be reported as Byra 3. And it was stable even over three years. So the absence of interval change in microclassification that are probably benign on the basis of morphology criteria is a reassuring sign and is an indication for continued mammographic follow-up. If the morphology, based on morphology, okay, and distribution, relatively distribution, are reassuring, are probably benign, then it can be followed up. But, and even some calcifications are known to resolve completely. However, sometimes even DCIS, uh, sometimes uh, of uh, DCIS can remain unchanged for years as we mentioned before. So stability of suspicious microclassification is unreliable for exclusion of malignancy. And in one study of patients with biopsy proven malignancy, 25% of patients had stable microclassification for up to 63 months. How many years this? If you divide it by five, five, five years. years, five years, three months, yeah? Yeah, it was stable and it was still DCI. So this here, this is a coarse heterogeneous calcification. After six months, it was progressing. The extent is obviously uh, more. And then according to that, biopsy uh, recommended and uh, it turned out to be a BCIS. And in these examples, this is a new calcification detected on follow-up on a screening mammogram, and this is a spot compression magnification view, administrated polymorphic calcifications. Uh, so it is by rat 4B and proven to be DCI. So the message is with these calcification, you cannot tell whether they are malignant and they have to be biopsied. We have to biopsy. Since it is suspicious, we have to biopsy it. And it seems that morphology is far more important than stability. If the morphology is suspicious, we have to go for biopsy. We should not rely on the stability. Stability, we rely on stability if the calcification is probably benign. Then we can rely on stability. 
So the isolated group of round, including punctate calcification at the baseline evaluation can be designed as probably benign, for which short-term interval follow-up mammography is appropriate. Other type of calcification may be categorized as probably benign if the radiologist has personal experience justify a watchable waiting approach. And if yourself, you can feel that uh, this group of punctate or amorphous type of classification might tend, uh, according to your experience, that more toward the probably benign, you can just uh, report it and uh, make a survey uh, or a follow up and make sure that is not going to progress or uh, to, to turn or to make to be more uh, suspicious types. Okay. Uh, like also example for that, like developing classifications that are more likely, not definitely vascular classification. And if you suggest this is, might be early classification, uh, early vascular classification, or this area of evolving fat necrosis, just you can follow it up and make sure not uh, a suspicious type of classification. Okay, so regarding additional views, as you know, these suspicious type of classifications or non-typical uh, benign classification is important to uh, make sure or to enhance the morphology as well as the distribution. So the magnification view is a primary technique to do and to clarify uh, these types of uh, morphology as well as distributions. And because uh, uh, as, as we described before, the magnifications will decrease the noise and increase the image sharpness. It's also important to do the magnification in both CC as well as the uh, orthogonal view, especially in case of fibrocystic, to uh, discriminate the milk of typical milk of calcium from worrisome or suspicious type of calcification. As well, we it's important also to assess uh, this type of calcification on interval and to determine any changes, you, you have to have a baseline uh, spot compression uh, magnification view and uh, as well as on the follow-up. Okay. Uh, this, uh, if you look here, there is calcification here, but not very clear. Look for the spot compression magnification, how it clarified, how it make it clear, and also magnifications in two different view, even with different angles, giving yani, more view for the morphology as well as for the distribution, as in this example of suspicious type of classifications, magnification view demonstrate <clears throat> uh, demonstrated very well, and it was uh, both biopsy revealed grade one invasive ductal carcinoma. Invasive ductal carcinoma. There is underlying asymmetry here, might be, but it might be part of the parenchyma. The parenchyma is nodular, but at the end, there, there was no palpable abnormality, and it is, was only just a screening mammography, and it was invasive cancer. Again, look for the spot magnification, how, to, how is clarifying this faint area of group of calcifications, linear, you see, uh, pleomorphic and linear calcifications, they obviously seen in this. And if, you, if I ask you where this calcification on this standard view, you will tell me it's difficult to tell how Look how it's clarified here. And even it is fine linear type in segmented distribution in a case of DCIS. And another example of this group of classification 
look for the spot magnification, how demonstrate this non-homogeneous linear classification in another case of a DCIS. Okay, digital breast homosynthesis does not substantially improve the interpretation of microclassifications and may even overlook microclassifications since particles are uh, dispersed over multiple thin slice images. That is why it's important to use the full digital mammography on a screening, uh, on a screening setting along with the tomosensis. Ultrasound for suspicious classification, a focused or targeted ultrasound is reasonable to evaluate for mammographically occult abnormalities such as a mass associated with that uh, classifications and also classification can sometimes re-demonstrate it on ultrasound and here we can use it an option for image guided. Regarding biopsy, as you know, as we described before, that these micro classification are non-specific on mammography. Okay, it, it can be benign, it can be malignant. So sampling, needle sampling is essential, especially for the more suspicious type by RAT4 and 5, uh, <clears throat> which often means uh, the stereotactic or digital breast homosensis guided biopsy if you cannot have correlate on ultrasound. And essentially in the case of ultrasound guided or image guided biopsy, we have to put the markers, okay, uh, deposited at the site to make sure we are in the correct biopsy site and take an image, okay, mammography for the biopsy, uh, post biopsy, mammography should be done to ensure that uh, the biopsy had been taken from the correct sides. So this here, this uh, <clears throat> classification and same classification seen uh, on the specimen. This is also example for the specimen. We demonstrate the same types of classification as well as this extensive leomorphic classification in a mass, uh, in a specimen, in a ductal carcinoma demonstrated in uh, both removal. Then you see, this is obviously the strophic type of classification, but at the same time, I can see anteriorly uh, a group of uh, uh, bleomorphic type of classification. If I, I, I told you, if I have benign classification, I have to search and to exclude any suspicious type of classification. For this <clears throat> biopsy, vacuum biopsy uh, performed and confirmed high grade DCIS. And here, this is the specimen demonstrate the classifications. This here, I have two area of group uh, lemorphic classifications. The larger posterior and the one anterior with about five centimeter apart. So in the same uh, <clears throat> linear distributions or segmental distributions. So if the biopsy of the ferris tend to be benign, most likely the second one will be the same and the reverse. If it will tend to be malignant, this is most likely to be malignant. The, the biopsy is the first one and turned out to be a uh, grade two DCIS. Then definitely biopsy indicated for the second one and it's also turned out to be grade two uh, DCIS for which a mastectomy with sentinel node procedure was planned. Why? Because the total area of DCIS sought to be large for conserving uh, uh, breast uh, surgery. Okay, what is BIRAT in this case? By five, this five, linear 
uh, in linear distribution. Polymorphic, okay, polymorphic. Uh, this classification extends from here to here. So, segmental. Segmental. Why five? Why you said five? Segmental distribution is by rat. Five. Forty. We have no, we have no, uh, neither uh, morphology nor distribution representing Pirate 5. Pirate 5, if there are associated features. See, we have, we have three morphology representing Pirate 4B and one morphology representing Pirate 4C, which is linear. A fine linear and fine linear branching. And we have uh, two uh, distribution group and regional are by rat 4B and the linear and segmental representing by rat 4C. Yes? Okay. So this is by rat 4C. And this one Mm -hmm. Morphology. Fine polymorphic. Five. Fine polymorphic, excellent. And distribution. I think it's in segmental. Not pointing Regional. toward the nipple. Okay, mm -hmm. it be regional. regional. So it is by rat. Fine polymorphic. So it will be by rat. Uh -huh. Four B, four B, four C, huh? four B, four B. Yes, it is four B. Regional is four B. Demorphic okay. is four B. So it will be four B. Okay. It's okay. And what about this one? It will be four. Four C. It will uh -huh. be by, by rat five because Sarah. Uh, it is. Sarah is talking. Okay, fine polymorphic. Yes, fine polymorphic. Yes. And, yeah, why and is five? Why is five? Because fine polymorphic segmental was associated huh? with uh, associated with a mass. Speculated mass. Yes, because with it was associated mass. with underlying speculated mass, regardless of the classification. So it will be five, regardless, even okay. if it is one then it will be five because okay. of the underlying speculated mass. But this is segmental distributions. But if you look carefully for the spot magnifications, you will see even fine linear classifications. So you expect yes. this uh, invasive cancer with associated high grade DCIS. Yes. Expected yes. to be associated with a high grade Says this is by rat five, and uh, so here this it will be by rat five because of the associated underlying speculated mass. Uh, what is this? What is this type of classification? This is BB marker. Excellent. This is the BB marker. marker. This is the BB mark. This is the classification, course classification in a lymph node, while this is the BB marker. Okay. What type of classifications? Linear branching classification. Or linear usually is fine. Linear is usually fine. But there is similar when like linear, but when it is more conspicuous, more obvious, we call it red line. Uh, of course, heterogeneous. Of course, heterogeneous. This is a course heterogeneous. It is a course heterogeneous classification. Okay, and what about this one? King classification. Hmm? King classification. What is the type of this, uh, this type of classification? Morphology round. distribution. Round, round classification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Round 
usual to set the round is mm -hmm. okay. This is smudgy like smudgy. Is fuzzy. Is fuzzy type. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fuzzy, smudgy, diffuse. It can be, we can say, amorphous type, but it is diffuse distributions. So, regarding regarding the more or less homogeneous, this is it will go toward by rat. Still for B. Why? Two three. Excellent. Who said? Who said two three? Who said two three? Me, me, Medina. Excellent, Medina. Excellent. Well done. Yes, it's scattered. It's scattered distribution. It's scattered. And if you look for this type, it is more or less homogeneous density, homogeneous size, homogeneous shape. The criteria of benign type of microclassification we described. And this is diffuse amorphous classifications in adenosis. This is fibrocystic type of classifications. Okay. One of the causes of diffuse calcifications on mammography is adenosis, fibrocystic. Occasionally, you might side, see it as multiple group of calcifications. So it is between, so if it is bilateral, especially if it is bilateral, it will be bilateral too. And if it is regional or so, it can be bilateral three. If it is multiple group and bilateral, it will be para three. Okay. What is the type of classification here? Is straightforward? Quickly. Two. Two. Type of classification. Two. <laughs> two. Two. Yes. It is two. It is para. It is which type? One of the nine typical benign is. Popcorn. Of course, this is popcorn like evolutive fibroadenoma. Uh, okay, what is type of classification and virus? Yeah, this is fine linear branching. Excellent, fine linear branching. This is morphology and distribution. Uh, it is the group. Group, excellent group. So it will be virus or C or C because of. The morphology. Morphology, excellent. Fine linear, fine linear branching by rat C, and the case it was a DCIS. Okay, and this is 60 year old lady with thickening of her left breast. Ah. Quickly, when we, who is going to take this case? Mm -hmm. Let us finish. Okay, okay. This is linear, uh, linear, fine, uh, linear, in uh, linear distribution. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You can say linear, you can say. Yes, it can be linear distribution or Yani, there is overlap between linear and in the distribution. When we talk about linear, we are taking, we're talking about ductal. When it is one ductal system, it's linear. When it's ductal and it's branches, it will be linear branch. segmented. It will be segmented. So the overlap in the distribution between linear and segmented. Okay, yes, I accept. If you said this is linear, I will pass it for you. If you said it's uh, segmental, it's also small segments can be accepted. So the distribution is highly suspicious. What about the particles itself, the morphology, the form of the type of classification? Huh? Fine linear branching. Excellent. Fine linear branching. So what is next? 4C. Okay, this is a, a 4C. This is a segment. Look here. It looks like a segmented. Or here it might give 
appearance of a linear. So it can be segmental or when you look here, it is almost segmental with branching, okay? So spot magnification demonstrates segmental fine linear branching calcification. It is bar at 4C and the biopsy was DCIS. Okay, what, what is the type of calcification? Vascular classification by RAT2 and this classification? Suture. Huh? Suture. Sutures. Sutures. Excellent. This suture classification. This is, you see, are uh, the not like is typical. And the third one is partially calcified, not completely calcified. And this is here, is also sutural calcifications. Another example. What is going on here? What is the image reflecting? The mm -hmm. reattractive biopsy. Mm -hmm. uh, fine pleomorphic. Is it reattractive or uh, you can see? Mm -hmm. Hook. A hook placed in an area of Polymorphic and amorphous. Polymorphic and amorphous, amorphous classification. Yes, here this is polymorphic, but this is amorphous type of classifications. So they put the hook to help because it is non palpable to help the surgeon remove this type of calcification. This is a hook wire localizations and the biopsy, the histopathology uh, revealed no any malignancy, amorphous calcifications. Okay. What about this lady, 50 year old, presented with tenderness for a screening mammography? She presented for a screening mammography, but she has tenderness. Can you see an abnormality here? This is of calcium. Excellent. Why you said milk of calcium? So where? Yes. Why you said milk of calcium where? Um, at the left, medial. Left. Excellent. Uh, medial. Excellent. Uh, Why you said milk of calcium? Why you said milk of calcium? In the medial, it's sedimented. Yes. It, it demonstrates change here in the smudgy, and here demonstrate linear. Change in shape, in shape. So is gravity, and this is a spot magnification, a smudgy, amorphous type on the CC, and giving the layering on the uh, orthogonal uh, gravitational view. Milk of calcium. This multiple or volume fibroadenomas. Okay. And what about this one? Rim calcification. What? Rim calcification. Okay. Um, usually the rim calcification a little bit thinner. But, but you might need to see the other view, okay? Now? Bobcord. So it is important to see different yeah, view on view. mammography. Yeah. Ah, so? Vascular. Vascular. Uh -huh. And this? Uh, this is a bilimorphic and segmental distribution. Bilimorphic calcification, either segmental or multiple groups. If you can say this is not any pointing as pyramids, we can say multiple group taking large area of the breast, polymorphic and fine linear type of classification. And in, in a case of PCIS, this is typical, suspicious. And this one. Plasma cell mastitis, this is large rod like. Rod like, but here, the branching and mostly of central lucency due to classification of the ductual rather than classification of secretion. This one. Milk of calcium. Excellent. Well and this one. 
mounted. Uh -huh. Now we call it. Uh -huh. round, 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 uh, Abir. Diffuse round. Yes, the car. Where are you? I miss you today. <laughs> Hi, sorry, oh. Dr. Rabab. I have joined too late today. Okay, you're welcome. So, the, this is round calcification. If you said round, it includes round and punctate calcifications. And what is virad? Virad too. Why? It's diffuse. Because it's diffuse. diffuse. It is the morphology and the distribution both are benign. It is virad too. So this is by right too. And this one. This is under view and this is a spot magnification. This is linear. Linear and fine linear branching calcification. Only if you look here and there is another group here. This is one and this is the other one. There is difference between the two. Yeah. Uh, amorphous excellent the other group is amorphous and this, is okay. this is highly so it is going to be graded as or coded as 4C. 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 4C because of the linear branch okay this is a case of high grade DCIS in 41 year old asymptomatic screening mammography fine branching calcifications okay as well as adjacent amorphous calcifications in the upper outer quadrant well appreciated in the magnification view stereotactic revealed biopsy revealed high grade dcis what about these calcifications what is the type for citrogenous Suspicious speculus. Now, what is this type of classification? First of all, is it one of the nine? Typical. Is it one of the nine? Is it one of the nine typical B9 classification or suspicious classification? Yes. Yes. This is suspicious. suspicious. For citrogenous calcification is underlying architectural distortion. This is, yeah, I can accept from you, but this is the trophic calcification. And as we mentioned before, this is larger. This is large type of calcification. Look here. It's more than one millimeter calcifications. And the difference between coarse heterogeneous and dystrophic is size. Okay? And what about this? This is the 30 of, sorry. This is the 37 year old lady with 100 pounds uh, weight loss. New ball bubble mass. So, Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mediolateral it represents calcification. It represent what? Emor calcification. In? In mediolateral we have to do So, what is this tri? What is this structures? Uh, this is marker. Excellent marker at the side of palpable mass. Bulbable mass. So at the side of the bulbable mass, there is Immortal suspicious calcification. calcification. And considering the history, though the patient is young, but from the history and the presence of this amorphic calcification, it will increase the level of suspicions. And the distribution is? The segmental distribution. Segmental distribution. Look here, the spot magnification, how it's clarified. Segmental fine polymorphic, and the case it was a DCIS. And this one, 
Excellent. This is the previous eggshell calcification, and now it's called rim calcification. This one. Course hydrogenous. Fine. Okay. Fine linear branching. Excellent. Fine linear barat 4C and this turned out to be DCIS. And this one? Large rod. Rod like. Excellent. And this one? Skin calcification. Excellent. Well done. This is And this one? Linear. Huh? Who is going to get it? Linear branch. Who is going to get it? Huh? Who is going to get it? This is fine linear branching? No. Is it a so, magnified view? Not the magnified view. Uh -huh. This is large rod like. This large is rod like. Rod -like. Even if I tell, if I, I told you this is, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a magnified view. It is, it is a small, it is homogeneous in density. It having a shape, it having a regular shape. This is rod like. This is the focal, focal rod like. We said not always. The focal rod like is not always. Yes, it is usually diffuse, but it is not always. It can be focal, can be segmented. And we mentioned that we have to differentiate it from the uh, linear and coarse heterogeneous. Uh, what is the difference here? Huh? What is the type of this type of this classification? Uh huh. Who is talking? By the end, you have to talk with more confidence. Do you agree? Yes. We have so seen have. numerous examples. We have seen multiple examples. I brought yes. a lot of examples so as to be familiar with these types of classifications. Huh? This is different types of fine linear branching, fine linear and linear branching type of calcification. Different examples. Okay. The what about yeah. what about this one? This is large rod All the above above row. Yes. This row also is, linear branch. Yeah. This is a B9, typical B9, and this is the highest species. Look for the haphazard, look for the haphazard distribution. Even this look like a rod like, but if you look look for the distribution, how it is haphazard and how it is of different uh, density. Okay, if you compare this and this, this is pointing in a ductal distribution toward the nipple, while this having haphazard distributions and different in homogeneous in density, in homogeneous in shape, in homogeneous in size. See? But these all are fine and fine linear branching, and this is a rod like. And this one here. Morphous classification. Same, this is a fine linear, fine and fine linear branching, but look the same, haphazard distributions. So simulating rod like, this is a rod like, okay? This is a rod like, this is rod like, this is a row representing the rod like, while this one representing the fine and fine linear. This is more fine. If you look carefully, you will see it as linear. Okay, a lot of, if you look here, these are lines. Lines, linear and linear branching. It might be associated with some polymorphic, but line, linear and linear branching. Huh? And what about these illustrations here? And this classification. So obviously, uh-huh. 
His name is already so. Mm -hmm. No volunteer? What is written here? This is a ponte, carefully mm -hmm. here. Uh -huh. Microsystem. Milk of calcium. Milk of calcium. Vascular. Popcorn. Popcorn. Rod shape. Leaf like. Mm -hmm. What is leaf like? Dystrophic. This is a dystrophic type of calcification. So these representing the typical benign type of calcification. Okay. This appearance representing typical benign type, while these are non typical type, non typical benign, so are the suspicious type. So this pattern, pattern of benign calcification, while the other one is not. And what, about, what is the difference between these four? If you look for this one, compare it with this one, compare it with this and with this one. Uh -huh. So this, uh -huh. quickly, we are toward the end of the lecture. So, what is the morphology regarding this type of classification? Is it typical B9? No, this is suspicious. Suspicious. What is the difference between the four types? If you look here, what about this one? This is fine linear. It's a fine linear. And what about this one? It's amorphous. Amorphous, difficult to be. Uh, this is amorphous and this one. Also amorphous. This is this is amorphous, but, but this is polymorphic. If you look here, you can discriminate some some lines, some rounded, okay? Some mm -hmm. high density, some low density, some okay. small, some large. These are polymorphic. This is amorphous. And this, course obviously, course. more conspicuous. Mm -hmm. This is a coarse uh, heterogeneous. So this is uh, four types of morphology, suspicious morphology. Uh, coarse hydrogenous, amorphous, polymorphic. Sometimes it's difficult to differentiate between amorphous and uh, polymorphic type of calcifications. Yes, and yes. these obviously here representing the five type uh, the descriptors, the distribution descriptors, the five uh, descriptors of the distributions from diffuse regional group and multiple group, segmental and linear, okay? And in conclusions, improved methods to differentiate benign from malignant classification uh, are thus needed and force yourself to look away and search for the sub, um, for any areas of possible cancer among the obviously benign type of classification. If you have seen typical type of benign or probably benign classification, try to force yourself to look around for any other suspicious classification. You have to exclude it on your on the mammography. You are going to report micro classification as we described, non-specific. So an operative ME guided sampling is essential and evidence from microclassification and histologic evaluation will give a better staging uh, aggressiveness and management of uh, DCIS. And there are well described patterns that help to distinguish benign from potentially malignant changes. The most important of these descriptors is size and morphology. Feature that suggest benign changes include diffuse or multiple similar group in one 
quadrant in one or bilateral breast uh, in ACNI. And yeah, that means round or punctate morphology or uniformity uh, of the individual flex of pulsification and lack of interval changes. And this is put, uh, put it between two brackets, not, not for all morphology to say lack of interval changes for probably benign morphology. Typically classification seen with the invasive ductal carcinoma, as we mentioned, lobular carcinoma rarely presenting as uh, early uh, presentation uh, as, cars, as, as classifications in her, and in its early presentations uh, is rarely, uh, sorry, or co get confusing, but uh, lobular carcinoma is rarely presenting as calcifications, as mammographic calcifications. That is why lobular type of calcification is mostly benign, while uh, invasive ductal carcinoma representing third of calcifications, malignant calcification seen on mammography, while the other two thirds are due to CIS. Features that indicate further evaluation include interval changes, leomorphism, variability in shape, size, and density, linear and branching pattern, form, and segmental and linear distributions. So large rod-like secretory calcification can appear in press duct. It's related to the duct. However, is completely unrelated to cancer. And we have to differentiate it from other suspicious linear calcification or linear shape, linear morphology. Segmental or linear distributions of a micro calcification are either round, punctate, or amorphous, or closely packed group of leomorphic micro calcification are described as suspicious for malignancy. You see, so even the morphology is probably benign or less suspicious, but because the distribution is suspicious, more suspicious, segmental or linear, so it will upgrade the morphology and make it more suspicious and give it more predictions for malignancy. But in some pattern like group or regional Distributions of microclassifications are amorphous, coarse heterogeneous round punctate may describe as probably benign. In this, both the distributions as well as morphology are not much of high uh, probability of being malignant. So you have a chance to report it as probably benign and uh, uh, re-evaluated in a short term follow-up, but we have to consider low-grade DCIS in this group. Classification, growth rate, help to differentiate benign from malignant and refer to the extent of classification rather than size or, of, uh, or number of individual classification. And ductal carcinoma in situ are more extensive at diagnosis as well as grow faster in extent than those associated with benign breast diseases. And thank you for attention.